what's going on y'all welcome to the one mic with big mike video log i think this is number four yeah four already um i want to holler at you guys about black colleges and racism on this one so last week wisconsin basketball player nigel hayes and some of the other student athletes at wisconsin released a statement on twitter detailing what they described as racism at and around campus Nigel Hayes, for those of you who aren't familiar with him, is no stranger to letting his voice be heard on social issues. Uh, he's the kid that got caught or caught on at flack for showing up at college game day with a sign that said, quote, broke college athlete, anything helps, end quote. As you can see, the sign also has his Venmo handle on it for anyone who wanted to contribute. Now, by the way, this also happened after some kid did the same damn thing, requesting people send him money for beer. Reports are that over 3,000 people donated to him. But um, I didn't see his sign you know, called stupid and people, all the vitriol behind his sign. I saw his sign described as ingenious and awesome. Hmm. I wonder why. He, being Nigel Hayes, and one of his teammates, Jordan Hill, protested the national anthem at their opener this past weekend, their, their, their basketball season opener, by standing about two steps behind where their other teammates were lined up. Uh, something that, um, if you guys remember, David West, they, they found out that he'd been doing it for years, way before where Colin Kaepernick took a seat, but no one really noticed because he, didn't, he hadn't said anything about it. Anyway, back to the Twitter statement. In the statement Hayes referred, he referenced an incident in which a fan at, Wis at the Wisconsin game wore a Donald Trump mask while leading another fan in a President Barack Obama costume around by a noose. Now, as you would expect, the university released one of those statements, those we don't condone this, blah, blah, blah ass statements, but apparently had one enough for some of the Wisconsin student athletes led by Nigel Hayes. In addition to the costume incident, he referenced being uh, loved, quote, loved during competition, but subject to racial discrimination in our everyday lives, end quote. He also mentions the assumption that athletes of color wouldn't have been admitted to the university on their own merits alone, as well as incidents of them being labeled as loiterers and uh, white folks threatening to call the police when they were simply just waiting on an Uber. <laughs> uh, he says black student athletes at the university want to be respected as individuals and not just revered for their entertainment value. But isn't that a part, a big part of the black experience in this country? Like as long as the nigga can entertain massa, he's all good, right? So, I mean, kind of, you know, you live with the good, live with the bad sometimes. Uh, but he also talks about being proud to attend UW and how the positive experiences far outweigh the negative ones. He suggests the university, quote, create real programs, initiate meaningful change, and understand that students of color deserve to thrive in this institution, end quote. Now, as I read the story, my first thought was, Negro leave. You and all of them underappreciated black athletes up there or at any school shouldn't feel obligated to stay somewhere that you obviously feel allows you to be treated like damn show ponies remember uh the nebraska kid remember the nebraska kid that broke down crying i think his name was michael rose ivy he broke down crying at the press conference as he talked about how the way that he and some of his teammates were threatened by racist fans because they chose not to stand for the national anthem they were called quote unquote confused niggas Folks said they should be kicked off the team and even lynched. Yeah, I'm talking to them too. Bounce, cuz. Dip. Uh, one of the things that has become so very clear to me you know, regarding all this stuff is the lack of understanding by the younger generation that in this country, when it comes to racial issues, change requires sacrifice. Not asking nicely via social media or crying to the same people who are being racist to you. See, those kids want to play D1, big time D1, football and basketball. But in the case of Nigel Hayes, he's in, he's in one of the most racist states for black men in this country. And then he want to act surprised. He and the rest of his, uh, the people that are, that are surrounding him in this case, they want to be surprised when they get treated as just another nigga. And that state, of course, I'm talking about Wisconsin. Uh, the owner of the Bucks, if you guys remember, said... It's the most racist place that he'd ever been, and he won line. Like I got, I got statistics to back it up. Uh, Wisconsin has the worst record in the nation for teaching black students how to read. 
the gap between a black student and a white student in Wisconsin is larger than any other state of all the 50. Uh, Wisconsin puts more black men in prison than any other state in the country. I think the country's average is one out of every 10. Yeah, Wisconsin said, I'll up you that. I'll go one out of every eight. This is where this dude chose to go to school. He's a big time basketball player. So look, when I say leave, I don't just mean Nigel Hayes should leave. I'm saying that all their black asses should bounce. Then make it clear to any other black kid that's considering playing a sport at that school that they should consider their other options. If they don't want to be treated like just another show pony rather than a human. If you guys remember, last year the, the Missouri football team threatened to sit out one football game versus BYU. And the university shit their collective pants. That's one damn football game. And folks got fired. They were forced to resign. And some more shit. What the hell you think they do if black athletes just left? And don't act like you listening to this thinking like, well, where the hell are they going to go? Huh. I'm sure Howard, Alabama A&M, Southern, any of these other HBCUs, they'd find place for D1 talent on their teams. See, these big-time athletes, they seem to find their way to these HBCUs when they get kicked out of school for, for getting in some trouble or something. You know, you guys know what I'm talking about. Now, I'm definitely not saying black people in general should let races run, run them off or run you off or run me off. What I'm saying is in big-time college athletics, blacks are the majority. Like one of the few places in this country besides prison that blacks are the majority. And they are also necessary for these big universities to feel competitive teams that allow them to rake in all those millions and billions of dollars. The only difference in me saying this and somebody else imploring black folks to put all their money into black banks is that this would actually have an effect on racist white folks. There was a time when big time white schools had to kiss your black ass if they wanted, if they wanted to win because HBCUs had a monopoly on all the best talent that happened to be black. <laughs> you want to wake racist white folks up? Then stop trying to have your cake and eat it too and realize when you're in an, where, when you're in an advantageous position football in the power five conferences rates in about 3.5 billion dollars a year and black men make up somewhere around 57 percent of the on-field participants what the hell you think wisconsin or any of these other schools would do if almost 60 percent of its players just left i'll tell you shit a damn brick and then they'd be then they'd be the ones begging pleading for the kids please treat us better look Attending an HBCU might mean you don't play in front of 100,000 people. And you may not have $100 million facilities at your disposal. But you probably won't be dropping social media posts begging the university not to treat you like a nigga either. In time, though, I believe the other side of the seesaw would drop. The on-field talent is what attracts eyes, which attracts money. So in time, it'll be Alabama State that you'll see on ABC at 8 p.m. on a Saturday evening. And it'll be the University of Alabama that they'll bury somewhere on ESPN 5 because they won't have no damn players worth watching. Just think about it. Feel free to comment below and be sure to tune in to the One Mike with Big Mike show every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Spreaker.